right, Jay in the building. What's going on with you, my G? Oh, man, it's a lovely day in South Carolina, baby. All right, all right, South Carolina. That's 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 where you from, born and raised? No, nah, I was born in Virginia, but kind of half and half. I was raised in Virginia, so I was about 13-ish and been here ever since. I don't know, man. Yo, 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 accent, yo, 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 vibe, yo, yo, swagger, kind, kind of, kind of, kind of reminds me of New Yorkish, bro. <laughs> man, I grew up around a, a bunch of different cats, man, from all of them. Mm -hmm. All right. So tell me a little bit about yourself, man. What, 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 you know, what, what, what you done, or what you have done, or what <clears throat> you doing, or what are you doing? What's up? Oh, man, I've done a little bit of everything from law enforcement work to welding. Then later on in life, I became a business owner. Okay. Um, okay. Just, just doing a little bit of everything. All right. So let's talk about your uh, your time in law enforcement. Now, let me ask you this. this I mean, law enforcement could entails of a lot of a, a lot of divisions. So. You was was you a cop? Was you a CEO? Was you a security guard? What's up? <clears throat> yeah, um, I started off, you know, like everybody else, as a patrol officer. I was excuse the beeping, man. Um, mm -hmm. Started off as a patrol officer. Um, did that for probably what twelve, about about twelve years, and then. Um, and once I became a, I started a trucking business, and okay, okay. I wanted to keep my certification um, up to current. So basically, you had to start um, find like a part time job, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I did that for about two years. And because I, it, it was an agency at a smaller town, and because I came from an accredited agency. Um, when that chief went to go retire, they ended up uh, offering me a job as the as the police chief, and okay. that's, that's kind of where my law enforcement career ended. If you uh, check out my TikTok page, man, you'll see where I detail the story about how all that happened. And um, you know, I've been pretty transparent with that with everything that happened. What, what there? It was more for the people that where, don't for the people that don't you know know about tiktok and everything uh give us give us a synopsis of what happened to you um i i basically took the job um i had no i had plenty of other requirements um i did interdiction work mm -hmm. um i was in pharmaceutical diversion mm -hmm. i was emergency response active shooter train all okay. all basically all, all the street stuff but i had zero administration experience Right, and when you take over a position such as the chief, you're responsible for everything. Right, like people, all, all the evidence, all your people, yeah. your paperwork, yeah, everything. And um, you'd have to go on TikTok to look at the pictures, but mm -hmm. I had I had a friend of mine who still he was pretty high ranking at the agency I came from, and I, I had no um. I really didn't understand the grasp of everything that was wrong within their evidence room mm -hmm. from previous administration. Mm -hmm. And so when I took those pictures and sent them to him, he was like, look, man, you need to shut the door, lock that shit up and, and don't touch anything. And that should have been my first <laughs> red flag. And, uh, but, but I didn't, man. It's uh, like I said, I, I have been shy by saying that. <clears throat> I'm not going to say I, I wasn't, Administratively, I wasn't qualified. I, you know, they they promised me when they gave me the job, they was going to you know, train get you in some class. Yeah, we're going to train you, get you into classes, didn't stuff happen. like that. But yeah, it happened when I got arrested. <laughs> 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 I got trained. I got trained real quick. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, so Small how town politics, man? So how how long how long you was in law enforcement before you was forced out? Um, well, that, that was toward the end of my, it was, it was 14, 15 years. That was toward wow. the end of it. And yeah, man, I'm, whoo, 
you do you think if if you hadn't have took the administrative position, you you think you would still be in law enforcement? Uh, probably not. Um, once you know, when I left the larger agency, it was uh, I, I it was already kind of swinging more toward political, you know, than it was actually doing stuff that helps the community and actually what the job is for. So. I, I had already kind of started having, you know, there's a lot of, you know, like, there's a lot of stress that comes along with that job. Right. And, right. You know, it has started after, after so many years, man, it started, you, you know, you have, um, I think yeah, my daughter was just, my daughter had been born. And mm-hmm. so that, that put me having three kids. And so it was a, um, it was just a lot of stress, man. You see a lot of, a lot of evil. <laughs> so doing your, doing your I, long- I, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I, you know, it did. I, I never did really do much on the traffic enforcement side. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in all the years I worked at the larger agency, I, I might have wrote maybe four tickets, and that was because I worked an accident, and our policy required you to write a ticket. Okay. Um, I so, spent ninety percent of my time ans- answering calls and and stuff like that. So, so do yeah, I? It was just, throughout your uh, your law enforcement. Was was that in Virginia or was that in uh, South Carolina? No, all, all South Carolina. Oh, okay, that's yeah, what's I, up. Moved, I, I moved here when I was like thir- thirteen or fourteen. I can't remember. Okay, okay. So uh, it's you, been a long time ago. I'm forty now. So. I got you. I got you. So <laughs> you know, throughout the throughout the twelve, fourteen years that you rocked out as a you know as a law enforcement officer, did was you? ever in a position of you pulling your gun on anybody or using your gun on anybody like that? Yeah, four, four times. Four times. I, um, we was in an incident. We tried to stop a vehicle. Mm-hmm. And once we got that vehicle stopped, and um, I can't remember what it was. It was behind like a little, um, uh, like a lodge. And they stopped. We got out to approach the vehicle, and the gentleman started revving the vehicle up. And just, it was a, I'll never forget it. It was a 2005 Mustang, dropped the clutch on it, and, and came at us. And, um, that was the only time I ever had to discharge. But, um, yeah, there was a few other times, man. Um, oh. if you do the job long enough, eventually it, it'll happen, but. You say it, um, it, it, you, say, actually, you say it'll happen eventually. <laughs> it, it will happen eventually, yeah. Um, you know, but I was fortunate enough, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, they watch my content on TikTok, they get the presumption that I'm not anti law enforcement, I'm mm-hmm. not pro law enforcement. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just, you know, I did the job so I can kind of see both sides of it. I was fortunate enough that I was trained by two two very well-rounded guys, man. And, um, I, you know, I never had a single civilian complaint in all the years I've done it. Someone accusing me of wrongdoing them or right. um, anything like that, man. It's just, uh, you know, I was trained to have a lot of common sense and, and a lot of compassion and, you know, trying to put yourself in position, you know, of, of whatever, you know, you just, you just can't, you can't do that job and be closed minded. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So you, you mentioned, uh, at the start of our conversation, you, you mentioned, uh, trucking. So are you still in trucking or you just did a stint on it? You got your CDLs or what? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they had one, one, one triaxle truck that did a uh, asphalt, you know, asphalt, sand and gravel work. It mm-hmm. still does that. But myself, I was in an accident October, or not October, August 2020. And, um, and I was in the hospital for almost 14 months, almost oh. died three times. And, um, so I'm still kind of rehabbing from all that. So, and I did, mean, this, at this did, point, it's just, did, this, this from your time in trucking? Uh yeah. What happened? Yeah, well, I, I was in a I was I was in a personal vehicle. Oh, okay. okay. I was in a yep. I was in a personal vehicle. Got um crossed over the center line and uh we got we hit head on. 
you you in another car or a, a semi? Yeah, yeah me. No, nah, it was two. I was in my personal vehicle. Okay. Okay. Yep. Wow. And you said, and, and you said the hospital said that you 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 passed over twice, huh? Three times. Yeah. Three times. The first day um, when I got to the hospital and then twice after that, I had complications from surgery and almost bled to death. Twice. Well, the good Lord said it wasn't your time, bro. It's not exactly. your time yet, man. So, you know, shout out to you, man, for 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 being a survivor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, man, man. I, it's smooth. Shout out to you for that, man. So, uh, TikTok, man, what what made you decide to uh, to jump on that app and 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 to start doing uh, you know, doing content on TikTok? Um, it, it like I said, if you go and check out my page, I really started just doing little silly stuff with with my daughter and my sister, and after my wreck, um, it kind of shut down for almost almost two years and so I had never I've been asked by our local media to share my story um, well actually my side of what happened oh you're talking about um, for the wreck all, right but no nah, with 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 the incident that happened when I was the police chief oh, okay. um, yeah I, I was in you know I, I had I've been reached out to several times to share that story I just never really um, it's not that I didn't feel comfortable talking about it. Uh, it's because, you know, uh, at that time I was still living pretty close to where all of it happened. Mm-hmm. And, um, there, there was a lot of, I'm actually working on an F I, I started a, trying to do a, me and I'm going to give you a little backstory. Um, on, on my TikTok page, if you notice it's JC three podcast. Yes, sir. And yeah, I went to start my own podcast and it was me and four other gentlemen Mm -hmm. and um we got together and you know this person had this equipment this person kind of one of those deals everybody kind of put put everything together we was gonna you know make make a a legitimate show out of it yeah make it happen and right and so um through tiktok i was able to get in touch with uh jason love who's another content creator on there and he gave me his personal information. So I told the guys I had, hey, I got a guest lined up. And, um, you know, they was like, well, who is it? And I was like, well, he, he wants me to wait up until, you know, a little closer, whatever, whatever. So they end up finding out. I end up telling them who it is. We start getting ready for the show. Mm-hmm. And one of the guys goes, well, let me call him and, you know, get this set up, that set up. And I was like, nah, he gave his information to me. He asked me not to share it with everybody. Right. I got to respect that. You know, right, right, and um, so that caused uh, a falling out. You know, what? it was like, oh, you don't want to share this. I was like, nah. I mean, if you bring on somebody and um, they give you your personal information and they say, hey, I don't want you to share, it, you know, with the whole studio, then you I mean, gotta, you gotta you know, respect that. A, you you gotta respect that because at the end of the day, um, you know, someone like him, he his he's donating his time. Right, you know, he's he's not asking for a dime to, to come on and do this podcast. Mm-hmm. All he's asking for is his privacy, and you got to respect that. Exactly, and um, that like you got to respect long. that. You got to respect that with uh, with anybody that's you know that that has that that has a significant following or a public right. figure or something like that. You know, it, it it was already great that you was able to you know get the information and to get him lined up. It's kind of exactly. It, it it's kind of it, it sounds kind of shady that 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 your partners that you that that you linked up with to get this podcast started, you know, want to turn around and turn face on you. That kind of get me to thinking, like, bro, um, I you know I did the work to right. you know get the you know get the guests come on. The guest says, don't don't give out my information to nobody else and. And you know, and you getting mad at me because I'm I'm trying to respect that. What is the issue here? Exactly, and that, and that was my whole thing with it. Well, long story short, mm-hmm. that kind of broke broke the band up, so to speak. Yeah, 
Yeah, and um, so our, we already had everything lined up. I went ahead and went through, and um, the audio turned out real janky. But nonetheless, me and him had a great time. We got got the first episode recorded, mm-hmm. and um, that's kind of what I'm working on now. I'm slowly getting my equipment in, and I'm working on my second episode, which is the the version I have of what happened on TikTok. It's real condensed. It's hard to get all the information in the little three minute segments, and um, so that's what I'm working on now. Well, and, let let me uh let me, let me give you a little let me throw some tips out there as far as uh equipment. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not sure I'm not sure what which way you're trying to you know go with your podcast, whether it's just straight audio or straight video and all like that. But as far as as far as getting good audio, um, there is equipment out there that you can that you can get good audio from. In particularly, I. You know the Rodecaster Pro. Uh, look into that. I mean, if you don't have the money for that, that's understandable because that is a six a six hundred dollar piece of equipment. But, gotcha. um, but there is uh, there is um, the Zoom Pod uh, Pod Track P4. That's another that that's another uh podcast uh recorder. It takes uh four input four mics and you can also do phone calls from it and all like that. Now this now I'm just going with straight audio. Now as far as video right, yeah. you know, as far as video goes, uh, you know, I'm not sure how you want it how how you wanna do it. You wanna do it tiktok live then you gotta you know that you gotta hook it up into your phone and all that other good stuff or if um youtube live or something like that if you want to do it like a whole production but yeah man you 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 know you got my you know you got my contact you know late you know later down the line later down the line when you want to you know when you want to chop it up with me man just you know holler at me and you know I'll, i'll you know i'll throw some gems your way yeah, most definitely, man. I appreciate that. All right, man. So, bro, what what happened at Red Lobster, my G? What what <laughs> happened, man? Oh man, it's a uh, one of many instances. Um, you know, that's down here, man. It really. I was kind of upset when I posted the initial video. That's why I did the follow up video to it. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, man, we were just basically my wife and I were we, we were sitting eating, and the gentleman beside of us he. First of all, he called his waiter over there, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, he made the comment. He made sure we we was able to hear, you know, the extent of, right. of his, I guess, his grievances of sitting there. Right. And um, uh, I, I I mean, you know, man, individuals are individuals, and um, you know, he was like, I don't want to sit here. You know, this this scenery is is making me nauseated. Mm-hmm. Um. So let me yeah, let me let me put yeah, this but, let me put this in context. So you know, being that you know this is audio, so that people know right. you you are. Is it safe to say that you are? What what are before I even say what what are you? What's your nationality? Uh, I'm I was a white dude, man. Okay, and <laughs> and, yeah. and your wife is. Uh, she's African American. Okay, so you know, just to get. So just to get the context of 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 the story and the and the reason why right, right. the reason why the dude was being a fucking <clears throat> asshole. Go ahead. Right. Yeah. And and so a, a couple more comments was made after that. And um, it, it's a real young. You know, a lot of a lot of people was, was knocking the waiter in my comment section, but this is a young kid, man. It's probably nineteen. Mm-hmm. There's no way the kid's over twenty one years old. Mm-hmm. And when, you know, once we told him, like, hey, we want to move, um, it, it was kind of busy. And I think he kind of, once we told him what was going on, um, I think he thought we was going to, well, not we, but me, I was going to flip out, you know, and mm-hmm. and call, you know, and, and, and call the big the in, in the yeah. restaurant. Right, yeah. And um, so he was like, man, I'm trying to move you guys. Um it's just busy. We got tables coming in. I was like, man, it's, it's fine. Mm-hmm. And um, just, you know, just work on it, whatever. And then he comes back. He's like, man, I can't move you right now. I was like, dude, it's, it's, it's completely fine. And right. right. After, after I mean, if anybody, I mean, I mean, if anybody need to move, it needs to be the dude. Right. 
<laughs> if that's right, the case. Exactly. You know. Right, exactly. And uh so like I said, man, one thing led to another and, and I'm and I'm a movie guy and as a couple people have pointed out, um, you know, I just, for some reason, man, that, that scene in that old movie shaft popped in my head. Oh, and so I just put, put the... a little napkin on, on my, yeah, I just put the napkin on my head and kind of made a point in the middle and I asked him if he feel more comfortable. You know, I got up and stood beside the table and asked him that. And, um, and like I said, man, um, a lot of people didn't bother to watch the follow-up, but you got to look at it from the perspective of management. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this guy's not hollering these comments out. He's just saying it loud enough to where us and the people behind us could hear. Could hear, right. and, and they were getting, you know, and the people behind us, you know, they, they actually. They was getting annoyed. Uh, when they went, well, when they saw what was happening, they brought our food to us in the go boxes, and they was like, hey, we need to, you know, uh, we need to ask you guys to leave. Wow. And so when they saw that, you know, the, they were like, no, no, that's not right. And I was like, hey, look, man. Right. Know, that's, so I mean, up, that's not right, but. Right. I mean, and, and that's what I try to tell people, man, um, you know, that that was in the, you know, you got to look at it from the perspective of management. Right. All, they didn't they didn't hear all this other stuff. All they saw was, um, you know, all they saw was me, <laughs> you know. Yeah, they saw. And, and yeah. once, once the after, we explained the, that. The aftermath. Them, right. You know, they, and that's what people yeah. always you know that's that's right. where people always go off of the the aftermath. They don't they don't know the whole right. story, man. And that's why that's why I hate right. like you know before it was YouTube where people would 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 put on like little clips and shit. But now with TikTok was with TikTok and it's only like three minutes. They they only cut the camera on at the at the, at the eventful part. You know what I'm saying? Right. They they not they and, not and starting had, it at the beginning. What led up to right. it, or the or the and, or and the I've, aftermath. I've had several comments asking like, "Hey, why? You know, if this happened, you would have recorded it." Mm. Uh, my, when when my wife and I go out, man, we typically leave our phones in the car. Right. Um, right. You know, in, in the past, we we've had. You know, we take our phones everywhere, mm-hmm. and and then you know, it, you, you reach a point in your relationship where when you have kids and careers, and mm-hmm. you know, you kind of want to spend that that time together. Right, you want to disconnect for a little bit, just a little bit, and um, but like again with the three minute clips, you know, I, I didn't have time to add all that in, mm-hmm. and and to be honest, if I had it to do over again, I wouldn't even have named the restaurant. I would just said a restaurant. Right. Because, um, like I said, man, you got to realize from perspective of management, you know, if I just looked across the restaurant and saw, you know, a big ass dude standing there with a napkin on his head, I was like, okay, look, they, they got to go. <laughs> <clears throat> but, it, but again, once once they found out um, the context of everything that was going on, they, they made it right, man. They, they, they oh, comped right. their meal, um, apologized. They right. asked the other, you know, the other people to leave. I was like, "Look, man, you you don't even have to ask them to leave. We're, we're leaving." Right. And you know, like and, and like I said, um, if you saw the video, I, I shared it for humor. I mean, me and my wife got a laugh. I love. We try to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the video the day, was yeah, yeah. The video was humorous. That and that's what gravitated right. me to to mm-hmm. reaching out to you and 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 you know talking to you you know talking to you a little bit more about it. Right, because a lot, uh, you know, like I said, this is not the first time something like this has happened. It's that's been by far the worst incident that's happened. But I mean, my wife and I walk into places holding hands, and they say, "Are you guys together?" <laughs> like, nah, we just <laughs> no, nah, we just hands. Stand you know here holding hands. Nah, what's, we just, what's the deal? Yeah, we just yeah, <laughs> right. You know, wow. we just stand here holding hands. We just happen to bump into each other. Or I mean, we yeah, I, I I just and, picked her up off the street, bro. Yeah, that that's what I right. Mean. You know, and and we have sat at the table on on the same side of the table and had uh, our waiter come and say, "Oh, is this together or separate or whatever?" <laughs> you know, and you could clearly see both of us with wedding bands on, right? I mean, like wow. it just you know, it it just amazes me, man. That and that's the main reason that I chose to share it, not just for the humor of it, but you know, you have a lot of people, man, that are oblivious that that things like this happen. 
Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and even though in the video, I was like, this, this white dude sitting beside me. I mean, we got it from all ethnicities of, of ethnic backgrounds of people, man. I mean, it's not just a, a one-sided thing. It's mm -hmm. Down here, it's, you have people that are strongly set in their beliefs. In their and, beliefs, yeah, especially and down that's south. Just the way it, that's, right, and that's just the way it is. It's it's unfortunate that that is still happening in modern Agreed. times. I agree. You know, I mean, I, I mean, you know, we we, I mean, you know, we we know for you know the previous four years, you know, they it's like they came out of the woodwork. You know what I'm saying, right. but. Right, you know, to the you know these these days, these days and times, man. I mean, this it, is it still like that. I mean, is it still people like that, man? I mean, really? I mean, they're you, there. You don't, Trust me. <laughs> you, you, you don't you you don't like me because of my color of my skin. Well, I if you go look at some of my other content, I mean, you. Man, I get a lot of flack for for my voice. Like I, like yeah, I that's why I say your yeah, that's why I say your accent. Yeah. You know, when we first converse, I mean, started the conversation. Yo, your accent, your vibe, your swagger is giving me New York vibes, bro. Because I got it. You know, my my I I I can honestly say that you know my as far as trucking goes, my closest trucking mm -hmm. buddy is white, and he's from New York. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? And he got you know he got the same. He got the same voice, the same swagger, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I mean, it's just unfortunate that, you know, in these days and times, but it's to be honest with you, let's let's be honest though. It's it's not just the the racial, the black white differences. It's it's white, white, white on white, it's black on black, right, exactly. Asian on Asian, Asian on white, you know, it's everybody's you know got uh, some prejudice inside themselves for whatever it's not just it, it, it's not just a black and white thing anymore you know? no and, and 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 what strikes me man is it could be the smallest of it, it's just like I, i'm not even sure that it's as much prejudice as it is just hate man it's like so many yeah. people nowadays are just miserable you know exactly man. and and it's and I'll tell you something, man. One thing um, about meeting Jason, uh, Jason Love, was um, I, I had a, a few hiccups with with capturing, you know, our podcast together. And, you know, we had a couple times where we had 10 or 15 minutes of downtime. And um, just, just some of the conversation that he and I had on top of what I went through with my accident. Right. Um, it gave me a different outlook, man, a perspective on life. It's like, um, it's like one of the things Jason said was, you know, if, if you allow that negativity to, to be a part of your life, then you're going to have those negative effects behind it. Mm -hmm. Because if so many people are negative now, because it's the easy thing to do. Exactly. I think that's how he said it. I'm kind of paraphrasing because I don't remember exactly how he said it, but basically he was saying like, you know, people that are hateful like that and negative like that, they do it because it's it's a lot easier just be negative than it is to try to find the positive. Exactly, Jay man. And, you know, it's, it's so. It's, oh, go ahead, go ahead. It's I'm easy for, yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy for somebody to just jump out there and be like, oh, I can't stand this son of bitch because of this. You know, I see the same. Well, yeah, you know, he's, he's taking the time to get to know that person. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, man. Well, Jay, man, I, I appreciate you giving me the time to get to know you, bruh. I really do appreciate yeah, man. that, man. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, shout out to uh, Red Lobster for, you know, getting that, you know, taking care of you guys. Because I, I would hate the the, the, see the, the the unfortunate backlash that comes from it because, you know, social, right. me social media is such a powerful thing.